behind the classroom door. We have had a request from Mrs Gilbrook, who has been learning about arrays with her Year 1 class. So we thought we would take a look at how arrays work. OK, right, so arrays. Now, arrays are used um, primarily with younger children to help demonstrate multiplication and multiplication facts. They are a visual tool, essentially. OK, so if we look at a really simple multiplication fact that we have here, 2 times 3, we have two lots of 3. OK, so we visualise that with two columns of 3. OK, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 giving us an answer of 6. Okay? Now it's really good, it's a really easy tool and it's a really fun way for younger children of making multiplication um, accessible. You can use whatever you like and it really lends itself to making it individual for the child or the children that you're working with. In this instance we've used tigers and certainly with younger children um, they, they love that um, interactiveness and that funness that you can install in it. You can use sweets, you could use fruit, you can use whatever you like to really demonstrate the multiplication facts that you're learning. Okay, so again, here we have 4 times 3, so that gives us 1, 2, 3, 4 columns of 3. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Now, as your children get that bit older, they can start moving on from counting them as individual objects to groups. So we've got 3, 6, 9, 12, giving us our answer. Okay, now, as they move on, they may well be presented with arrays as such, but without the question. So again, it's a very, very simple, um, very simple problem and very easily solved. We literally just count the rows and columns that we've got. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we go across 4, so we've got 4 columns of 5. Okay, now as your children grow, as they develop, as their understanding of maths and multiplication develops, they will be able to tell you, obviously, that gives us 20. Okay, now it may well be the other way around. So your child may well be presented with a problem like 6 times 2, display this as an array. So they then select the start of their array. So we've straight away got our images or our objects for our array set out. So we need 6 columns of Two. It is important, just from a presentation point of view, to try and keep your columns and your rows in equal position, just because that makes it easier for the child to then count what they've got in the end. It's just also very important for them to start getting an appreciation of the presentation that they produce for maths, because it just really helps with their understanding and it stops them from getting confused makes it easier to read their data, makes it easier to read their numbers. Okay, so again, we've got the situation here where we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So our answer is 12. As this moves on, it does become slightly less efficient. If you imagine that you're multiplying numbers like 16 times 30, it does become obviously slightly problematic. So in the next few videos, we'll show you how we can move that on, how you can move on from arrays, and how you can develop different methods of solving multiplication problems. Give this a go. As I said, you can put it out onto desks, and you can move uh, blocks or little figurines or animals around the tables, sweets, fruit works really well as well. It's a very nice visual way for very young children to start exploring multiplication and how it works. equals 20. They can use that fact to find out other facts quickly. 
So 10 plus 11, your child needs to calculate 10 plus 10 in their head and then know that they need to add on one more. So your answer would be 21. Similarly, if you want to find out 10 plus 9, again, 10 plus 10 is 20, so that your child needs to know this time, 9 is 1 less, so we're going to subtract 1. So 10 plus 10 is 20, subtract 1 becomes 19. In a second example, again, we've got 9 plus 9. Now, another mental strategy your child might use is to add 10 plus 10 equals 20, and each one of these needs one taking off. That makes 18. Or they might just know their doubles facts and know that 9 plus 9 equals 18. So with that fact, they can then find out 9 plus 8. I know that 9 plus 9 is 18. 8 is one less than 9. So 9 plus 8 would be 17. Again, 5 plus 5. Over here we've got 5 plus 4, so they know 5 plus 5 equals 10, and a lot of children will pick up doubles facts really quickly if they practice them. So 5 plus 4, 4 is 1 less, so I subtract 1 from the 10, so my answer, 5 plus 4 equals 9. 5 plus 6, so it's 1 more than 5 plus 5, so I add on 1, would be 11. 5 plus 6 equals 11. If they continue to practice these near double facts, their mental strategies will improve and they will be able to access more of the maths curriculum and answer questions much more quickly. Hope that helps.